first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is my first time speaking in something like that called SNW conference. Thank you. Uh, so basically, my name is Marko Ilić, and uh, I'm Java software developer and PHP software developer, and I'm working as a part of Guest in IT for the last seven months or so, more or less. And this is my first time working with MediaWiki and Wiki in general. So yeah, it was so far one great journey, and I hope that, and I'm sure that it will be in the future as well. So today, uh, as a developer, uh, you all know that uh, how important it is to have a good and a reliable coding standards, especially inside MediaWiki. Media so maintaining high quality uh, standards for MediaWiki extensions are very important uh, because uh, there can be a lot of difficulties. Uh, why am I saying that? Because uh, key difficulties could be, uh, for example, ensuring consistency across the development uh, environment, also CI environment and testing environment. And because of the fact that we sometimes uh, do not have the environment set up for all of these uh, that sometimes could not work. So uh, to address these, we propose an approach that uh, we cent centered uh, our a solution around Docker containers, and uh, uh, we try to define and standardize a solution uh, which will cover all of that in one. So uh, development, like uh, uh, development, testing, and CI environments. So that was the, the, the main point. And uh, there are a lot of contributors in Semantic Media Wiki, and uh, that was uh, the main problem, and that is the main problem today. And uh, there are not so many maintainers. So uh, with this approach, we will ensure that all the maintainers uh, which are having the pull request, uh, they will easily uh, get everything ready. And uh, because when you get a pull request, uh, you, it's time consuming for the maintainer to go through all the lines. But using this uh, Docker CI approach, it will be easy for the maintainer to have all the green lights, everything checked. And that is the most important thing because uh, the main issue is uh, so-called it works on my machine, as you all know. And uh, yeah, uh, but due to the fact that we have inc inconsistent environment, uh, then we have the issue that it won't work on other machine, etc. So this approach will avoid that, and using this approach, we will have uh, everything settled, and uh, we are sure that this approach is good to to enhance and uh, to use uh, worldwide, so to say. So uh, the first topic would be that uh, my colleague Luke will explain to you uh, how that is easy setup for you guys, how to set up. Uh, the Docker Compose CI, how to implement it inside the MediaWiki extension, and how to use it at the end of the day. So, Luke, please, shall you? Thank you. It's for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm Luke. Uh, that's my second SNWCon. Um, I was in Paderborn last year. It was really great. And it's also my first time doing such a presentation here. And, um, yeah, like um, Marco said, I will be showing you our repo, our Docker Compose CI repo, the setup of it and the main features. Um, this is also our only slide because most of the presentation will be uh, basically live coding and live demo for you. So yeah, I will change to my setup. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's the issue. Okay. <coughs> Let's see if we get any output. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
So that's a Docker Compose CI. Basically, it's um, yeah a repository which contains um, yeah everything you need to run a media wiki for your extension. So you have an extension, and normally your process would be like to mount it or clone it into your running media wiki. Um, this repository enables you just to take any extension, the code of the extension, add this repository as a submodule and run any CI with any version of MediaWiki without you doing anything. You don't even need a MediaWiki install on your machine um, or any kind of setup. Um, I chose a very, very simple extension to show you the well second problem we have. Um, implementing testing and CI and everything is, sh is mostly very complex and we wanted to have like a very easy solution so the contributors would have um, yeah, basically an easy way to run their environment, test it with different MediaWiki versions and also different um, database, uh, database types. And yeah, let's go through. I will take a very easy extension, which is this one. And if you know about extension development, it's really small. It doesn't even have a composer file in it. Um, this is basically just a special page that we add to the um, to the media wiki, and um, I will try to implement my CI and have basically um, run a, a media wiki and uh, a CI and test if the extension even works with that version um, by running one command. So, if we look. Um, at our Docker Compose uh, CI README. Um, it's pretty easy, all the steps are here. We first need just to check out this repository into our extension. So if we go into our extension, we'll add this submodule. Um, this submodule basically Okay, what is the problem? It's found locally with remote. Okay. I'll show you in the other extension where it's already implemented. Um, so basically, you just check out the submodule, which lands in a directory called build, in, in our case. And after you edit the submodule, of course, you, you have it as a module. So it always checks out when you're getting the extension and cloning it into, onto a new device. Um, and uh, the second thing we need is a make file. I think most of you know what make is. It's pretty old. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we use it as a the control part. Um, we have a template, an example make file, in which you basically put into your extension. I will just take this one and yeah, we're working on the other um, extension, so it's already here. And this make file, is, uh, make file basically um, allows you to run commands that ca come from the submodule. So um, what can we do now? Um, I think the most important thing is we can we can run a target called CI, which basically spawns uh, the media wiki. I can try it here, and there is an extension. It's semantic extra special properties, and this basically spawns um, a media wiki, copies your extension inside of it, um, writes a local setting, and loads the extension with a WF load extension, and um, yeah, basically that's uh, what it does, the very base of it. Um, we have some settings and things that we can parameterize or change. Um, first of all, the MediaWiki version and its PHP version. Um, basically the base Docker images, because I mean it's a, it's a Docker setup, it completely works with Docker and Docker Compose, um, for now are built by us. We basically cloned the the Docker file of the official um, MediaWiki images and uh, patched more PHP version in because the official MediaWiki images didn't have um, any MediaWiki version with any PHP version. And uh, that's basically selectable here. 
Um, we can also change the database. We could use the standard SQLite if we have extensions that need testing with that create some, some tables or something on the database, it's better to test it like with um, uh, MySQL or MariaDB. It's, it also basically supports PostgreSQL, but it isn't really supported by uh, MediaWiki itself, so, but it's possible. And um, yes, next things we can configure are extensions. So we have, uh, of course, dependencies. Our extension may have dependencies and we also need these because as it was, it won't really work. And um, if we look at the readme of Docker Compose CI, we have some of the most common extensions um, basically included. Um, you just need to set a specific version of the of the of the extension. Like if we would need um, Mermaid, I would just go over here and set it in my make file to a specific version. I don't know which what. The current version is, I think, is six dot something, and therefore I would get that exact version into the CI container. Um, yeah, you also can use n files, so you don't really need to touch the make file. And um, yes, that is basically the basic setup. Um, you see, this extension has a lot of composer tests and everything, so our simple make CI run has run everything. It's, Ran with 135, MediaWiki 135, and PHP 7.4. We also can change it to 139 and use 8.1. And basically, just with that change, it would use another image, another PHP version, and it would just do the same. <coughs> and this failed. Why ever? Ah, uh, yeah, of course, that uh, doesn't really exist. I'm sure the version is wrong. No? Okay, my keyboard stopped working. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, laptop. Um, and yes, that's basically the base of, uh, of, of the repository of this uh, Docker Compose CI. And of course, that's not everything. We also have unit tests, uh, anything else, and we have two more options. Uh, one of it is Composer extension. We use this if the extension has a Composer JSON, if it's basically managed by Composer, and of course, if you have unit testing and everything, you need to have Composer. And that part is where Marco comes in, where he had a lot of more work yeah. put into it. Yes. And of course, it only works in his machine, so. <laughs> so your Luke mentioned everything regarding the basic setup, and now we will check one of extension we was work, we were working for the last couple of months, and yeah, implement all of this inside it. So basically, can you see the screen or? Yeah, super. Yeah, it's semantic extra special properties, one of, we choose that one, for example. And yeah, as uh, Luke said uh, a little bit before, uh, before me, he said that it's important uh, if uh, the extension has uh, Composer JSON and if we need to test and uh, to create a unit and or integration tests, it, it is important to uh, create next set steps. So uh, in this extension, of course, the git submodule or docker compose CI is, is added as a submodule here. You can see this is the build folder. Uh, so basically everything is set up here and the next step would be to ensure, of course, that extension has its own make file. Uh, in this part, yeah, we are, we are pointing on the make file in that docker compose CI uh, submodule. And you can see that uh, all the images needed are uh, put it like this here and extensions needed for this uh, uh, MediaWiki extension to, to run properly. And as well, the Composer extension is set to true. That means that we are now jumping to Composer JSON file. Inside the Composer JSON file, uh, you need to put, uh, in terms of uh, testing, uh, you need to put the proper targets, which will trigger, be triggered when you run make CI. And as well, you need to, uh, we have also uh, added the PHP code sniffer and uh, uh, yeah, linting that's important for checking the code uh, 
to ensure that all the MidiWiki coding standards are, are there and supported and that everything is working fine and properly. And as well that uh, the linting, that the syntax are good and everything. And uh, we think that that's, that's also important and, and in, inside of a development branch. So um, we have also implemented this on, I think, Semantic Media Wiki, uh, which, which is a huge repository. And uh, we have reported, moreover, I think, over 100 uh, sniffs or something like that. And Yaron is the witness, yeah, I, I'm the guy who wrote the pull request for each sniff, so yeah, but in case of Semantic Media Wiki, which is great and a huge repo, there is a lot of code, uh, the code base is huge and there is a lot of job to do to clear all the sniffs. But in this case, as I said, it's important to put in the required dev part uh, to add dependencies which will be installed during the make CI. So the Docker Compose will update and uh, you need to add this media wiki code sniffer. I think this is the latest version and as well the parallel int. Uh, this is just a highlighter which will be uh, there to, to highlight everything. And afterwards, at the script parts, you need to add uh, these uh, uh, targets, so to say. So test, test coverage, analyze, fix. And we added uh, this and implement in order to have um, properly test coverage. And also, uh, during the test coverage, you will get this analyze run. Uh, and that's it's important because, as you can see here, you have a lint. Uh, target and PHP code sniffer target. And during the tests and uh, running the make CI, uh, beside the tests, uh, the code, uh, the make CI will check all the code. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's better like this. Thank you, Luke. Uh, so, yeah, the make CI will uh, trigger the test, and test will trigger the analyze, and we will get everything, all report. And uh, uh, it's important to have also, beside the uh, composer JSON and make file, to have PHP CS XML file. Uh, there, inside that file, you can define all the rules regarding the PHP code sniffer. And as you can see, you can exclude uh, ex exclude the, the sniffs uh, per sniff if you want. And in case of semantic with wiki, there are 100 and more. So it's, it's a big list. <laughs> And I added some of, for, of some of this on test, test uh, <coughs> branch to, to show to you a demo how it works and how to uh, fix the sniff. So we also have uh, added the uh, fix uh, target inside uh, the, 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 the Composer JSON because uh, as you all know, uh, we can, PHP code sniffer can automatically fix the sniffs. So you can run PHP, uh, PHP uh, yeah, PHP PS, and it, it will it will uh, run the, the the fix automatically. But uh, what is uh, great about it that you can, uh, as you can see at this part where we have implemented this, you can run sniff by sniff, and we think that that is the important thing. Why? Because this is how it looks. One of my pull requests uh, for this to be more specific for this extension when. Uh, maintainer of the of the repository get the pull request like this. Okay, he will see. Uh -huh, yeah, uh, this sniff is uh, this commit is for that sniff, and every uh, each and every sniff will be separate commit uh, because it's more uh, easy to read, to maintain, and to 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 comprehend at the end. Uh, we could also fix uh, a lot of sniffs at one step, but then the commit will be huge, and the maintainer will lo lose in the steps. So I th we think that this approach is good. And uh, for example, if we run now make CI, for example, you will see that the build will start and the composer will update and everything. And at the end, before going to the tests, it will do the job of uh, PHP code sniffer, will check the coding standards and the lint will check the everything regarding the syntax and, and, and all. It, and it's a good approach because uh, since I started working with this, um, I learned a lot because now when I'm developing and working inside the extension, uh, I know that when I write in the code, oh yeah, that was a sniff last time, uh, let's, let's avoid that and let's avoid using uh, composer sniff and uh, uh, composer fix and, and uh, avoid th those unnecessary steps if it can be avoided. So it's good uh, as well to learn. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's great to use. So we will wait a little bit.
and one more important thing as well. Uh, so you can trigger and run make fix for separate sniff, for example, but uh, in case that when code base is huge and there are a lot of, so to say, features uh, inside the code, uh, sometimes uh, make fix won't work because it uh, can affect the workflow in general. So it's good for us, you can run the make uh, fix and you can not hurt the code and workflow in general, so it's good, it's, it's good that it's covered. So as you can see, parallel int run first, and those are the files that are checked, 76 files in this extension. And yeah, PHP CS reported an error, two errors, which I commented here. So I exclude the other ones, so these two. And now, for example, if we want to fix them, what is important as well? Uh, you can see that this part is the same for those two extensions, right? Uh, sniffs. So basically, uh, you need to exclude everything after last dot. So this is the group, and this is the subgroup of the sniff. So basically, when you are running make fix, just copy this part for these two, and go to the composer JSON, go to this fix part, PHP sniffs, and copy this. I think that's the one, let me check. Yeah, and just go back and run make fix. And again, the make CI will triggered, make fix target, and at the end of these logs, you will see that how many files are uh, fixed and that will be the final result. And also, let's wait that to finish. You, you need to uh, have inside uh, Docker Compose CI, you need to have Docker Compose override file, which will mount the changes to container itself. So basically, uh, this all will be triggered, mounted to the container, you will be able to commit the changes and the fix will be gone. So just wait a minute. And this is good, you know, because uh, you can, and that's the main point, you can check uh, all the environments uh, inside our, your local machine before going to the GitHub, pushing the changes, and everything uh, run the CI in local, so that's, that's important. As you can see, fixed two files, uh, uh, two lines fixed, and yeah, total errors, and if you go back, go here, you can see that property registry, that's some uh, file I choose and create some errors on purpose just to, to imitate this. And as you can see, this is uh, maybe too like this. Mm, it's not needed anymore. You can see that this uh, sniff are now fixed. And if we check the sniffs, yeah, that's spacing before close and no space before argument. So those two are fixed. And if we check the differences, yeah, you can see that everything is fixed. This one and this one. And now if we run make CI again, it should pass without any issues. So PHP CS won't find any kind of violation regarding coding standards and that will be finished without issues and test will be also as well run, so. Yeah, my opinion is that, that this can improve a lot uh, the development and the work on the accessions itself because it's important to have uh, the coding standards uh, in good shape, so to say, because um, as I am new in the Midwicker world, I came and I get onboarding process. And it's easier for the developer, for example, to be on the onboarding process uh, while having the code and coding standards uh, set up and everything is working fine. And it's easier to read the code as well, both for maintainers and contributors. And yeah, uh, it will work now. The all tests are run and the final result. So basically, basically, uh, and yeah, the part where you need to mount the things, token compose override YAML, and need to point uh, the place in the container and the extension where to be 
unmounted and yeah just oh, sorry just afterwards commit everything and yeah it will be pushed and also for example i added this environment file for uh, midi wiki version 1.41 and <coughs> we have for our local purposes uh, 1.39 i pushed everything here to avoid tapping this in, inside the make file just include for example 41 and yeah make ci and as you can see the midi wiki version no wait a minute yeah it's uh, yeah it's 1.41 database mysql 8 1.41 so yeah it's easy to to maintain it's easy to work with it's straightforward it's not a uh, huge, huge task to do, so I think that uh, this can be valuable for improving our MediWiki extensions and MediWiki in general, and yeah, that's something I am working for the last two or three months or so, and yeah, I um, am trying to learn as much as I can regarding MediWiki from bottom up, from testing and going up, so yeah, but but it's it's a good way to learn as well. So, but now uh, Luke will jump in again, and he will explain how to create a CI GitHub action, how to include more metrics in one uh, GitHub action, and to run uh, simultaneously a lot of different MediWiki versions, and to check everything before before committing. And that's that's something that Luke will. Uh, I think I covered everything. If I Skip yes. something, uh, just... Uh, One, two, <coughs> okay, okay. So, Luke, please jump in and... Okay. Yes, so how do we use this in basically CI and continuous integration? I mean, let's wait until... Since we have now this, this whole platform where we can automate uh, things, versions, um, basically if the extension has the tests and every package installed that it needs over the composer, we can basically completely automate those tests. And um, here's an example for a GitLab CI. Yeah, I had to use a virtual keyboard because my keyboard really doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and um, yes, uh, looking at the same extension, we can basically utilize this functionality and um, um, GitHub. Yeah. Zoom, yeah, of course. Uh, I need to do it like this. Appearance, I'm sorry. Zoom in. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. We have the possibility to set different variables for different runs in, um, yeah. GitHub CI, and this basically allows us to test different configurations, like 135 with SMW in a specific version. We test with MySQL, we test with SQLite, the same configuration, basically. We test with 139 um, and, and your PHP, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a cool functionality, so you can basically stack multiple builds and combinations. There's also the possibility to set excludes and everything um, in this matrix. And basically this looks like that on the um, GitHub side. When a commit or anything happens, um, we now have way better test results for the extension. We can see all the different jobs that it generated out of the matrix, 135, 139, 140. Um, we can also use branches. We do not necessarily need to use tags or release versions in this run we use basically the dev master branch from SNW. Um, and yes, that's how it looks then on GitHub. At least I think most, if not all, semantic media <coughs> wiki extensions should have this implemented. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty helpful also in regards of newer media wiki versions. If, even if you don't really touch or do any work for the newer versions, you could add them and just look if what fails, if it fails, and um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, maybe just one small thing, um, that was Composer. We also have the ability to do this for um, NPM and package JSONs. Um, basically this 
works the same. It only supports test and test coverage targets. But if you set a test and test coverage script in your package JSON, you could, you also can run um, JavaScript um, or node testing. And that's it. really it's <laughs> built off make and it's only used in WSL or Linux itself I mean most of the logic is written in make oh. yeah, you can run the sequences uh, on your own if you want <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, okay. thought it would be like the best tool and Thank you very much.